This is going to be a quick video on how to do line layout, not actual point layout, but line layout with the Heel Tilty PLC 400. I'm using this with the PLT 300, but you can also use this with the POS 150, POS 180, same software. So I'm stationed. I already have a project open. I'm going to go ahead and jump into my layout tab. If I was not stationed and I didn't have, let's say I had an empty project, no CAD file, I can still do this application. What you'd do is you'd go into stationing, and as long as you had an empty project, nothing in there, you can station over a building line, which is essentially the same exact thing, except you start by stationing off of two points on a building line, and then you're pulling your offsets. What I'm going to do instead is I'm already stationed. I'm going to show you what it looks like when you do this in an actual drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and swipe down. From the, oh, let me show you how I did that. So you have three tabs up here, your view tab, your draw tab, and on the right side, your layout tab. A lot of layout options on here. I'm going to go to line layout over here. And now I'm in. So now it says I can either select a line. So I'll start with that. I'm going to show you what it looks like when you select a line for reference, select an arc for reference, and then how you do it by doing your own measurement from arbitrary lines. So here we go. I'm going to select a line. Let me just say I want to lay out based off of this line. You see how it selects it? And the arrows are pointing one way. Let me zoom out so you can see a little better. I'm going to select the line again and watch how the arrows go the opposite direction. So all I'm doing when I do that is I change where my zero zero is. Right now the zero zero is over here. If I change this way, the zero zero is now over here. If I tap it, the reason it's going that way is because my laser my laser is on over there. So anyway, that's how that is. Let me connect to my prism real quick so you can see a little clearer. Okay, now it's not going to be bouncing around so much because I got it connected to me. But yeah, so if you watch, so right now this, where I am standing right now, where this crosshair is right here, that's where I am, that's where I'm standing on one of my control points. This is where the line is, that 10 foot, what it's saying is that from that, where it starts over here, where it's showing me my zero, zero, I'm 10 feet away from that starting point. And I'm about an inch, almost, oh, basically, sorry, excuse me, two feet, right? Two feet off that line. I'm about two feet off that line. And as I move, it's going to adjust as I'm going. But if I change my zero, zero by tapping the line one more time, now my zero, zero is at the other end, and now I'm only two feet away from that zero, zero. So I hope that makes things clear about how that works when I'm tapping a line, selecting an arc or a line for reference. So now all I can do is as I walk, it's giving me my exact offset. I'm going to just move down the line a little bit. I just move down a little bit, and you can see... Now I've moved down the line five feet. I'm still about a two foot offset off. So I'll come back a little bit further, three foot three. So this is a very simple way of explaining. You can lay out a whole grid by doing this just by giving it one line and then pulling your prism every 25 feet or so, making your mark and making sure you stay in line with the zero zero or with the five foot down the line mark, whatever you want to choose. You can easily keep pulling your 90s from this. So for instance, just so you can get the idea, here's my zero zero at this end, okay? If I wanted to make sure that I stayed at a direct 90 to this point, I would just make sure that my green number stayed on zero. Let me pull exactly to zero there, my 16th, that's close enough. I want to make sure my green number stayed as close to zero as possible as I went up, and I know that I'd be at a direct 90 from this line on the zero, zero mark. All right, so I keep going down here. I'm walking a little bit further. Pretty self explanatory. Because I'm using one hand, I won't do this, but right now I am six inches, six inches ahead of my zero, zero, so I need to move to the left a little bit, get close to zero as possible, and I'm basically close to my 90 from over there. I hope that makes sense. It's just the button pushes I want to make sure you see. So that's my down and outs. Now if I did it on an arc, same thing. So I'll select this arc over here, right? Let me zoom out. So now instead of following a direct line, it's just following the arc itself. So it's telling me my exact offsets from that arc or that circle. You can see how it's kind of giving me a, an image of where I am. Let me pull back a little bit so you can see even better. Okay, so right now it's telling me that I am three and a half inches off the circle but I am 17 feet away, circumference-wise, on the circle itself right here. That's it. That's where the zero, zero starts at that arc. That's all it's telling me. So I can follow the arc as well, so that I can get a little more clear on that. 
All right, I hope that's pretty clear. It's pretty self-explanatory, but again, that's just my me going into, let me switch the application so you can see it again. Me going to line layout, and I want to lay out a line. It's going to say select a line or an arc for reference. I select a line or an arc, and it's telling me my offset from a certain zero, zero. Tap the line multiple times to choose which side of the line you want to be a zero, zero, so you get your, your numbers right. But now if I tap this little screen over here, and I'm going to bring up a menu. And this menu is going to let me shift. You have two, two parts of the menu. You have create and you have measure. Okay, create is where when I tap a line, I can choose to shift that line one way or the other before I begin. So for instance, if I say, okay, I want that line to be offset uh, three feet, for instance. Okay, and I select the line, see where I put it? That's the line it's gonna give me. That's where it's gonna give me my zero, zero, at that three foot offset over there, all right? If I say I wanted to also shift it down the line two feet, notice my zero, zero is two feet ahead of where it was before. Right, it was over here, and now it's bumped up over there. And I can do that for height as well if you're doing things with height. You can move the line up or down if you're working with 3D. I can even rotate it, so if I say, okay, I want this to be exactly a 90 degree angle, type in 90, say enter, and now it moves it exactly 90. I can do the same thing for 45, and now it's guiding you along a line from a certain origin, exactly where you want it to be. So for instance, let's say I want to have the original line, I'll put these at zero, keep my angle perfect, and now I know exactly a 45 degree angle from that zero, zero point from before. Just the button pushes I want you to see here, okay? So that's me selecting a line or an arc, and I'm shifting it before I work, but usually I never shift it when I'm just doing a grid, so I'm not gonna shift anything, and I'm gonna go ahead and work from here. Okay, next, when I open up this menu and I have create, if I don't, if I have, I, I, like I said, I can either select a line or an arc, but let's say that I don't have a line or an arc to measure, I want to I want to make my own two points. So what I can do is I can say line, I'm going to create my own line, and then what comes up? Select two points for the line. Well, I can select two points or I can measure my own. If I select two points, I could just take point one over here. I was hitting layout points. It has to be measured points. I can take this point here. These are measured points which, you, which I can select, but what I can't select are these layout points. I can select the line, but I can't say I'm going to do it on a line and try to select layout points. No, I can. There we go. I was wondering why I couldn't hit this one up here, but it's probably because it's hidden behind that line. So yeah, any point that you have, as long as you have access to it, you can hit it. If you can't hit them, sometimes what I do is I turn my layers. I turn off all my layers, except for my point layers, and I go back to line layout and I select the points that I want to layout with. Right, for instance. I don't know why that's not highlighting, but it, clearly it's registering that it's selecting it. Okay. I go back in here, line. See, selecting. I don't know why it's not highlighting it. So there you go. I found a glitch, but it works. All right. So now let's go into, let me turn my layers back on. All right. So now I'm going to go back into here. I can do arc three points. This is where I just select an arc with three points. One, two, three. Come on, give me a third point here. I can select three points to give it a to give it an arc I want to I want to make my own. It'll create an arc that'll let me follow, or arc two points in a radius. I have two points in a known radius, and I can lay it off of that. Very, that's actually pretty basic. I don't use those very often. Most of the time, what I do though is if I go to line, it says select two points. Well, if I don't have two points for the line, I can simply measure. A random point on my own and see how it saved it that, that's where I am right there the little red point and then I'll just walk some arbitrary distance let me just walk over here set my unit down I'm gonna measure again and that's where I just measured I have two points and a new line that it now follows that I just gave it so if I have a, a line that I know is in the field but it's not in the CAD I can make it my make it on my own if I wanted to and just go ahead and, and follow it. What I see some people do is they measure and record a couple points, draw the line between it by using the little line draw, and then they just tap the line so they can see it. But if you don't need to do that, you can just do the same thing like I just did, line, and select your two points you wanna go off of and go forward with it. 
So for what I'm going to do though, I'm going to go back to this line down here, select it. And I'm going to show you a couple more button pushes. Once you have your line selected that you're doing, then you go to this measure screen and you have a couple more options you can do. You have where it's just telling you where you are on the line. Okay, so right now I'm in, I have point to line checked, which means it's telling me where my point is in relation to the line. And I like to have absolute height turned on. The difference between absolute height and relative height is uh, if you, let's say you measure a line and point one on the line is at zero height elevation and point two on the line is at five height elevation, your height's gonna be based off the actual slope of that line. So if you're on the slope and on that line, the height's gonna be zero, it's gonna be relative. I like to base everything off my original benchmark. So it tells me exactly how high off the ground I am from my original benchmark point, no matter where the line is. But what I like to do here, so I say so here I'm on point to line. If I want the tool to guide me to a specific point of the line, I untap point to line. Notice that these now come up. I can say, hey, take me to my one foot down the line, six inch down the line, zero. So I want to go down the line one foot six inches. Okay. And I want to go offset exactly eight feet. Okay, I'm going to say enter. So now it's telling me how to get there. So now I just got to follow the crosshairs until I match that spot. Let me just close in on this. Okay, so now I'm just following and close this line. So now I'm giving it a point I want to go to based off the line. And I'm just following it right down. Pretty self-explanatory here. Okay, so there's a couple, I'm now just following these, these offsets that I give it and it's telling me how to get there. I can even set a height if I wanted to and it's telling me down there what my absolute versus relative height are. They should be the same actually because of the, uh, yeah, the lines on the ground. So I hope that helps for the button pushes. Just get out there working. I just wanted to send this video because I think it might help somebody. But uh, that's pretty much it. There's a lot of button pushes in there, but once you get used to it, it's actually not that hard.